Good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, um, so, yes, my topic is Sarnia, a bird friendly city. Are we? Could we be? Can we get that designation? That's really what we're in the midst of working on. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. I think we wanted to just move the screen out a little bit, right? So that um, you just move the screen out a little bit so that people here can see better. Yeah. So I'm also going to mix in a little bit of my own uh, bird watching or in the vernacular birder uh, philosophy and experience. I'm not, a, I'm not, uh, I'm not traveling all over the world, bird, all over the world birding like many people do, but uh, I enjoy it. So um, anybody know what that guy is? Pardon me? Is it a red belly? You get the marks today, Greg. This is not a test. It's just for public interest if you don't know the answer. Uh, we got that in our backyard. We live uh, out uh, on the west side of Mike Weir Park towards Bryce Grove. So most of these pictures are taken from there. I'll also say uh, this, I am not a professional photographer. If you got Sarnia Camera Club in here, they'd say that's a crappy photo. <laughs> um, so, um, but I just share these pictures with you as examples um, of our experience. So, bird friendly city, uh, really one of the underwriting or underlying principles of bird friendly city is that birds visible in the city indicate the health of other species, the other natural species. Uh, birds typically blend into our community. A lot of people, many people, don't see them, don't hear them. Some people see the usuals, the robins, the chickadees, the geese, seagulls. Uh, but for many people, they're just beyond them. They just, they don't see them. Um, increased awareness requires only a very small effort. You can see birds on the golf course. I have friends who are birders who tell me about all the wonderful birds they see on, on Sony Golf and Country Club. Uh, you can hear them on TV, believe it or not. You'd be surprised how many dramatic programs have bird calls, bird song in the background if you start listening for it. And even on the Masters Golf Tournament, you'll hear birds. I've heard Carolina Wrens as an example on the Masters. It's easy to connect with birds and, and to enjoy them. You just need an inexpensive pair of binoculars, a bird app, or you can resort to your father's uh, bird book. And uh, some people are more into cameras, so use your camera. You can enjoy, uh, with a, good, a reasonably good camera, you can enjoy birds. Uh, but I personally prefer binoculars. I'll use a camera once in a while, but I prefer binoculars. And talking about birds is an easy gateway to broader biodiversity discussions. What about the plants? What about the trees? What about the insects? What about the mammals? Uh, where are they at? And by, by seeing birds and talking about birds and caring for birds, we're thinking about those other species as well. And so I think this fits very well with one of your principles, uh, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Now, um, so, sorry. Now this guy, any thoughts? American Woodcock. American Woodcock, yes. So um, when we see a bird in our backyard, it usually results in a mad scramble to get the camera, the binoculars and the, the tripod set, you know, tripod set up just inside the back door uh, of the hallway there and then waiting around for a couple of hours until you see it again and get a picture. Uh, this is the best I've ever seen a woodcock. Usually you see a woodcock, he's flying away from you in a scramble uh, from under the underbrush and then he goes down and you never see him again. Um, that was fun. <coughs> Thank you.
So what's the problem with birds? Well, the fact is that there's a decline in bird populations. Uh, most bird species have a long-standing decline in their population. You can see in the graph there, uh, the, the exceptions perhaps are um, uh, raptors and waterfowl. Uh, some are holding their own, but many, the, the ones that are in most trouble are aerial insectivores, the guys that are eating insects in the air, uh, grassland birds, and shorebirds. They're most at risk. And the research that Nature Canada points to shows that North America has lost about 3 billion birds in the last 50 years. Now, as dramatic as that seems, remember there's, there's the other side of the glass, the, the half full part of the glass, they're still 70% with us. So it's not, it's not like they're going to zero, but there has been a tremendous decline. And some of the main reasons are habitat loss, uh, window collisions, cat predations, pesticide use, insect declines, and cities have become danger zones for birds. And so, um, as I said before, talking about the bird decline is really talking about part of the larger decline in all species. And so it's time to act and start working on these things. Here's another one. Anybody online know what that is? Rose-breasted grosbeak. I know it's spring when this guy arrives in our backyard. They come for a few days and they're gone. Um, but we're fortunate enough to see them. Unfortunately, his mate is far drabber than that. But um, it's a, it's, it always says to me, hey, it's spring. We've, got, we've had the gross peaks for a few days. So uh, the nature or the Bird Friendly City initiative started as a, uh, an initiative by Nature Canada. They're a major cross-country nature organization. And they developed a vision for bird friendly, which is cities and towns across Canada that are safe places for birds. Where key threats are effectively mitigated. Where nature is restored so that native species can thrive and bird populations can thrive. And where residents are involved, celebrating, uh, helping birds, monitoring their populations and enjoying birds. That was the basic vision. So the Bird Friendly City program or the Bird Friendly City Initiative is a national campaign uh, to create safer urban environments for birds to thrive. Um, it's locally driven, so a city-led effort, city-level effort led by a local team or coalition. So that's why I'm chair of the bird team. We are the local coalition. Uh, we're working to make the city a bird-friendly city. We're encouraging action and change. And we're assembling evidence to achieve bird-friendly city certification. And that Nature Canada provides support, a whole bunch of resources, uh, a network of other teams, and so on. Strategy, publicity, uh, assistance with funding if we need it. Now, bird-friendly certification, what's that about? So it's a national, a national standard set by Nature Canada to assess the bird friendliness of a municipality. Uh, for those of you from industry, it's kind of like an ISO audit. Uh, for those of you from healthcare, it's kind of like uh, the assessments that are done in hospitals or in, should be done in long-term care facilities um, to assess their effectiveness. This is the same idea. And you get points that are signed for regula regulations, programs, and facilities in place. And based on that, you may be achieving one of three levels, entry, intermediate, or high level for friendliness. That's what we're trying to do. Now, Nature Canada has certified 16 cities. Uh, that's what's on the website. I think there are actually quite a few more that are either certified or on the way. But some good examples are London, Hamilton, uh, Windsor, 
to name a few close by. London has on their website has some excellent resources. If you go to London Bird Friendly, some excellent resources there about how to be a bird friendly city. Uh, the criteria that are involved in certification are a little bit intense. Um, and they address, but they're designed to address the threats and concerns that bird populations face in the city. So there's some mandatory elements, uh, which I'm not going to talk about too much. There's then there are some what they call optional elements. Each each of those there's three: threat reduction, habitat protection, community outreach. Each of those three has a, several actions within them. So a number of statements that say, "Does your city have this, this, and this?" Um, and um, again, points are assigned to each of those actions based on evidence of compliance. Do you have something in place? Do you have an activity going on? Do you have a regulation in place in the city? Do you have a bylaw that, that deals with this issue? And the idea is to assemble enough evidence to achieve the, the target point level to be certified as bird friendly. And you might ask, why, why would we do that? What's the benefit? Um, well, it's a badge of honor. It's a source of community pride. It shows that we're working to make this place a better place. Um, it, it's an opportunity for local organizations to collaborate with the city, uh, both the council and the staff, on, on uh, issues and to create good solutions to those issues. And we also, by being certified and participating in the program, we have access uh, to a network of other bird city bird teams and their resources. Uh, London, for instance, just told me a couple of weeks ago, all of our materials are open source. Grab whatever you need, whatever helps you. It's a great resource. We don't have to make stuff up from scratch when somebody's already done it. And there should be financial benefits. There should be health benefits. Um, because in the health case, access to nature um, improves physical, mental, and emotional health. And as I summarize it in the bottom, birds visible in the city indicate the health of other natural species. That's the ultimate um, benefit that we get from having a bird friendly city. Here's another one. Red breasted nuthatch, very good. Now, I don't know how we got this picture, frankly, because a nuthatch usually comes to the feeder in and out. Like, I, they very seldom perch like that. So I don't know how we got it, frankly, just luck. Um, and, uh, but, and they're a tiny little guy. They're, they're smaller than a chickadee. They sometimes hang around with chickadees. But we've had this guy in our backyard all summer. Uh, that they must, I'm sure they had a they had young somewhere in our area. And we had them coming to our feeder all summer. Um, so bird friendly in Sarnia, let's talk about that a little bit more. So bird friendly initiative was uh, endorsed by Lantern Wildlife in 2021. It was a resolution by Lantern Wildlife to form a bird team and to be part of the Bird Friendly City Initiative. And so we formed, basically it's an independent team, although we are um, sponsored with help and assistance and electronic help from Lantern Wildlife. There is right now about 12 of us associated with a number of different organizations in the city. Um, and latest member joined is also uh, works for Nature Conservancy, should be a good uh, link as well. So it includes Lambton Wildlife. We have uh, one city staff member, people from the Environmental Advisory Committee, friends of the Pinery, friends of St. Clair River. And I should say about half the people on their committee, it turns out, are not Sarnia residents. Which is, they're all Lambton County residents, but they're not from Sarnia, which was a bit of an eye opener to me when I started asking people, where do you live? Um, and it's been a, a struggle, frankly, through COVID 
you know, we started this um, in August of 2021. We have met totally online. So it's a struggle to do that and develop relationships and figure out who's doing what in that environment. But so we're moving slowly. Um, we did receive initial endorsement from the mayor and council. We've received endorsement from the Antrenong Environmental Committee. Uh, we've been initiating work with partner groups on key issues. Uh, we have a logo. You can see the logo in the top right there. Uh, that's, that's a Nature Canada logo. So most bird teams are using that same logo with their own city name in it. Um, we launched the logo Facebook group, and we also have the city bird poll to what we'd like to do is have a city bird, basically a mascot. So if you go on Facebook and look for um, Sarnia bird team and look for the bird poll, I think there's a list of half a dozen birds that are sort of considered the finalists and we'd like your vote. Which one would you like to be the city bird? So I'd encourage you to go look for that. We sponsored activities at the World Migratory Bird Day in May. World Migratory Bird Day is an international event. It's held usually the second Saturday of May to celebrate uh, migratory season. So we had um, a booth in the carriage house at Canaterra Park. We had a number of activities going on there with tours, bird tours, um, and some information to share with people. Um, actually, the mayor came and visited as well. And we'll be continuing to have uh, migratory bird day events on successive years. And we've been assembling examples and evidence um, of things that are in place relative to the criteria. We also completed a baseline submission to Nature Canada to give them an idea of where we're at. Put that in in June, that the results of that basically, it wasn't a, a formal application for certification, but it was kind of like a pretest. And it clearly said, we're not there yet. We don't have enough points. We're gonna be putting another one in this month, which I think will bring us close to the entry level but trying to get some feedback from Nature Canada. Are we touching enough elements here to be bird friendly certified? And so our ongoing focus is to increase our partner group participation and action focus. Uh, one of the things I've done as the chairperson has gone through the criteria, said, what are the major tasks we need to do? So for instance, we would like to have a focus on preventing window collisions in the city. What does that mean? So I don't really care if it's a member of the team or a partner group, like friends of Canaterra or some other nature group or some other person who's interested in getting involved um, to lead that activity on behalf of the bird team. That's the kind of thing we need to do. We will also have an initiative starting about roaming cats. Roaming cats are a major issue in cities. And we have a bylaw that says you shouldn't allow your cat to roam, but that's about all we have. And cats roam, and they are a major problem or significant problem. So we would like to have an initiative around that. And I've been identifying tasks for members of the team or other members of the community to work on. We're also enlisting the city support. We have a contact inside the city staff um, to identify specific policies and bylaws that need to be improved. So we're starting to have that discussion with the city now. And a big part of the criteria is around community awareness and outreach. So education of children, education of adults, um, having um, bird awareness in parks, um, and facilities to enjoy birds in parks, uh, those kind of things. So we are working on and planning to do more work around that. And our initial goal is to get entry level certification. Um, and as I say, it's a case of identifying um, what evidence and actions we need to take to close the gaps and get some points in those areas. And then seek formal certification. 
So how you can help, how you can get involved, how you can do things that are bird friendly, even if you don't want to be part of the team. I know people don't want to go to meetings, right? I know that. I understand that. I appreciate that. Some people just say, I'm not going to be on another committee for whatever reason, and I appreciate that and respect that. You can consider installing um, uh, window film that will prevent bird collisions. Um, if you look up Flat Canada or Feather Friendly, uh, Feather Friendly offers do-it-yourself kits for putting um, uh, dots on your window to prevent bird, bird collisions. If you want to see an example of that, um, slip down to 40, 40 Fuel at the south end of Indian Road and look at the glass building there that has bird-friendly film on it. That's impressive. They have big, high windows, two stories of windows, and uh, they have the bird-friendly materials on it. It's very impressive. Uh, a reduced light pollution, especially in the spring and fall migra migration season. Frankly, it's starting to bother me lately. It's my own personal opinion. I'm not, we're probably not going to be able to do anything about it. But drive around some of the new developments lately in the evening and look at the light. It seems like the architects have gone crazy with pot lights and under the eaves and lights in the yard uh, because it looks so great, apparently. Um, I don't understand why. I don't always understand why that's necessary. But um, think about reducing light pollution that you generate. Fortunately, Blue Water Power has changed all of the city street lights to downward facing LED uh, lighting that is of the proper color range uh, to reduce uh, issues for birds. I think that's great. I only found that out a few weeks ago. I'm going, this is wonderful. Um, keep your cats indoors or on your strain. Uh, plant native plants or trees. Uh, participate in the city bird poll that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can follow us on social media. I, we have a social media group guru that's, he's got us on Facebook, he's got us on Twitter, he's got us on, what are all the others? I can't remember them all. Feel free to participate in Lambton Wildlife programs. They just about every month, they have something that is interesting from a native species point of view or a natural species point of view. And if you're really interested, you'd be happy to, I'd be happy to talk to you about how you might be able to help out with the team. Did you know being surrounded by birds can make you happier? Literally, as I was preparing this presentation, my wife came across a posting on Facebook uh, attributed to the German Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research, and this was the quote. Um, so, uh, and then there was another quote, which I didn't write down for this presentation, but it was along the lines of, if you can add 10 new species to your list, it's the equivalent to a significant salary increase. I don't know if that's true or not, and I don't know if it came from this gang or not. Uh,